I have many things to tell you, and very little time. My, my name is Kale. I come from a universe parallel to yours. My world needs your help. You're the only one who can save us. I succeeded in opening the breach between my world and yours. Through your computer, you can enter our world and help us. Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite games. Um, it was on the PC and the Dreamcast. I'm sure the PC version is a little prettier. Um, I remember the sound being a little louder and nicer, but that might just be because obviously with the PC you have speakers and stuff where I guess the Dreamcast game they had to maybe compress the sound a bit. Um, it's called Omicron the Nomad Soul. It uh, was called just the Nomad Soul in Europe. I don't know about Japan. And uh, let's kick it off and I'll, I'll talk a little bit through it and show you a couple minutes of it. And as you saw a minute ago, um, it said about, you know, this guy asked you for his help. And he said, you can help me through your computer. But then on the screen it said Dreamcast because I guess they never changed the audio. And uh, so he breaks the third wall, which is funny for me. Like in a game, they it. reference that you're playing Dreamcast and that your soul, not the character, but you, is going into these, these people in the game. And uh, the point of the story is pretty much... Uh, you're this guy, you're a cop, and you and your detective, uh, you're a detective and your partner and you are on some case, and your partner gets killed, and then this guy I think is about to get killed or something, and your soul literally has to go into the game, into this guy to finish the quest. And then it, during the game, your soul jumps into other bodies. I don't know if it's story related, or it's only if you die, you just jump into random bodies, but so far I haven't died in my game. Um, this is from the beginning, but so far I haven't died in my game. So uh, I'm this guy, Kale, still, this red-headed guy with the blue shirt on. There's no saving going back if you get into trouble. You are entering. There's even one point in the game where I'm up to, and uh, I met this character, this like mysterious figure, and she says something to you, and you can respond to her and pick different things. And one of the things is... Uh, what is Omicron the Nomad Soul the video game? So I said screw it and I picked it and she's like oh that's the video game that you're playing right now that your soul is in and if you die you lose your soul like they actually like completely reference the game in the game and how you're playing it and stuff I filmed this video once already but I had made the dynamic contrast a little too high so things were very like saturated and um, I also had filmed the Samsung logo on the bottom of the TV, so I didn't really like that, so I do a new one. I always thought this was funny. You get the shit kicked out of you, and the thing from Robocop walks up and says, Well, if you're not okay, go to the hospital, otherwise see you the fuck later. I think I first played... It came out in 2000 on the Dreamcast. I don't know if that's the year it got released on PC as well. But, um... So it's got, you know, it's 13 years old now. So that means I definitely, I played it when I was about like 17 or 18. If I played it a little after it came out, maybe. I probably played it about 10 years ago. So anyway, there's, uh, there's three parts to the game pretty much. There's um, this like adventure aspect, kind of, it sort of reminds me of like a Shenmue Lite is what I reference. It's not nearly as pretty as you can see. It's a little blocky. The controls are like 10 controls, like Resident Evil, where you have to move left and right by holding left and right and then pushing up to go forward. Um, then there's like a fighting aspect which sort of reminds me of Virtua Fighter, like a side fighting game. And then there's a shooting part which is uh, first person and you walk around and you move and it's, it's pretty fluid and you shoot and have to shoot bad guys and stuff during certain parts of the game. Um, I like the sound effects. I always thought the sound effects were cool. Like you'll hear me picking up this thing on the floor now. Come on can't skip any of this. Alright, here we go. Now these are, these are This is kind of like Resident Evil as well. You have to pick up these rings. They're called magic rings. And you can put it back down. You don't have to pick it up, but here's one of the sound effects. I just always like that noise. Um, if you pick them up, you can save, game, save your game by using them. If you don't have one, you actually can't save. And um, I know I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm sorry. I, I like this game a lot. It's one of my favorites, so that's why I'm talking so much. The, uh, the soundtrack is done by David Bowie, and David Bowie's character is, is actually in the game. So there's like this band called the Dreamers, 
and uh, you have to find these flyers like hidden throughout the city and if you find them you can then go to the people's concerts and watch David Bowie sing a song off his album and uh, his album Hours, this is actually the, the, the song that this game got me into David Bowie a lot, I love David Bowie now but um, and I bought a, you know his greatest hits and his other albums but when I first played this um, this part of the game I thought was so cool because I remember playing on the PC and I walked out into the middle of the uh, you know the world and it's so big and, and vast looking and really cyberpunk and then David Bowie kicks off and I, thought, I just thought it was perfect so the soundtrack's really great so here we go here's uh, David Bowie's first song it's um it's called New Angels of Promise but they changed the words to incorporate the word Omicron in uh, in this version And as you see, it's made by Quantic Dream, the same guys who did um, Indigo Prophecy slash Fahrenheit in the, Euro in the European region. And um, what's the most recent one? Heavy Rain on the PS3. I haven't played that. It looks very good, though. So you can tell it's going to be a little weird, you know? Weird, but they always have great ideas and very different stuff, so that's cool. Right there, he's an Omicron. You didn't hear us coming in this lonely crowd. That, that Omicron word is taken out. They changed the they changed the beat a little bit. Yeah, I thought this was so cool back when I played this. I'm trying to think how old I was. I, I must have been 16, 17. It's easily over 10 years ago. You guys see any little, little like light lines? Um, that's just the way my TV is scaling it for some reason. The new VGA cable puts out 4.3 or 4, 4 by 3 ratio. I mean, um, then I stretch it to 16 by 9, and then I have to use another setting to stretch out even more. So my TV didn't scale the, uh, the VGA great, but it definitely looks very good. It's just there's like light, light lines in the background of certain scenes, especially in this game. You can really see them, and certain like dark backgrounds and stuff. But I love that intro. I think that's so cool. It really shows you like this big place, which is sort of what reminded me of Shenmue. I mean, the gameplay is sort of similar, but all right. So um, you can walk everywhere, but you can go into your inventory, and you know it shows you what you have. And oh, let me lower the volume a touch. It shows you all the stuff you have, and you can open a map, and uh, for hints, you can go into your memory and. and you know, like your kids, go to your apartment so, like, you know what to do next. And that's you, Kale. Like I said, you're a detective. There's all your stats. Uh, I don't think I've really been able to raise my stats yet. I don't know if that's from fighting. You Maybe they go up, or if you have to take certain items. I don't I don't really know. So you go into here, and you can call... A, it's called a slider. It's a uh, taxi cab, but you don't have to pay for it. Maybe because you're a cop. So call them, and they just show up. Kind of reminds me of Fifth Element with those things flying in the background, those uh, like cars in the air and stuff. That was quick. All right, so uh, um, the game's pretty big, and I'm not gonna be able to show you the first-person shooter stuff, but I will be able to show you a uh, quick demonstration of the fighting, which again is sort of simplistic. But select your apartment key. Apartment. Ta-da! 
I always thought it was cool that there was like a recessed kind of like couch table on the floor. I should do that one day if I ever buy a house. If I can buy a house, let's put it that way. That's your girlfriend, uh, Tellus, I think her name is, or K yeah, Tellus, I think it's a T. So, um, this is your kitchen, I would assume. It's a save point to save your game. Oh, the rings, yeah. You go up to the rings and you have to use those magic rings on them, and then you can save your game. If you don't have one, you can't save, like I said. I tried to skip it, but you can't. Talk to her. I'm not Kale, I'm occupying his body, but I've come from another dimension. Kale. Uh. I'm Telus, your wife. We oh, wife, that was girlfriend. Cycles. You're an in. Alright, I'm just gonna what? skip this. But yeah, there's little options you can pick, it changes the outcome oh, right. of what they say. Maybe you can find out more at your. And like, like you saw in the corner, I don't know if you noticed it, it's a data memorized. Anytime you uh, have a conversation or pick up something or look at it or something, if it's something you're going to need to use or look back on for evidence, like to know what to do next, you can, uh, let's pick up this gun. You can uh, go back and look at what you what, what was memorized. Um, there's also these computers pretty much almost everywhere inside of places you can use to... Uh, store things and examine them if you need, but you can examine stuff in your inventory too, but you can store them or take things out because your inventory is limited. There's the bedroom, she's gonna try and sleep with me. We're gonna skip that because, uh, you know, we're on a limited time here, you know. Making a video, I don't have time for that stuff. Open things up. Get your badge. Med kit. Shower, and the toilets in the other room. This is the room I want to show you. This is the room, like, uh, it's almost like the X-Men's, uh, danger room, or whatever the hell it's called. You can just test out your skills and, like, you know, fight a, a hologram. I'll show you a couple seconds of that. Hello, Agent Kale. Choose your difficulty level. Thank you. Easy. Get ready. The fight is about to start. Obviously on the left you see that bar, that's my health. So let's uh use my head kit. <clears throat> now I'm probably gonna stop about here. This is where you, you go off into the world and you uh you go to the police station and you start like talking to people at the at the police station to see what kind of case you were on. Um, they start asking you about your partner who died, and you real, you kind of put that together. You get like other items. Oh, there she is, the seductress. You just got back, and you're already leaving? I don't have time for this shit. My soul's in another body. Kale, I love you. Oh, you too, sweetie. You too. They make me dinner. I'm just kidding.
Maybe I'm not. I'm actually really hungry. I'm waiting on a friend right now to come over and we're gonna go get sushi, so. Dinner sounds good. There's a bar over here you can go to that has a shootout. Maybe I can run to the bar real quick and try and find it and show you guys that scene real quick. Where is the bar? I don't know. Cloops. Oh, what's up, little sad man? See if I can find this bar. If I can't, then I'll probably stop it here. Bookstore. Unless the bar portion might only be at a certain time in the game. I don't think there's like a time thing like in Shenmue where, you know, if you go to places at certain times, different things happen. I don't think it's like that, but I'm sure there's points in the game that make a difference depending on where you are. I didn't read anything with the bar address, so I wouldn't have anything. Go down for another minute, and I'll stop. Gun shop. Supermarket. Kiel gets winded. That's in this part goes into another area. That's another part of the game you get to in a little while. I think this is headquarters over here. Yeah, it is. I used to go in there later to. Uh, I never actually like really walked around this area. I always just use the, uh, the slider. store. Yeah. What's over here? Let's see. Cars can hit you and hurt you, so you have to be careful. There's a little bit like load times. I mean, they're good in terms of loading, but you'll see like, like that. Like it stops for a second, like right now, and it opens. Oh, this is the, uh, a morgue. Alright, so anyway, that's the gist of it. It's uh, Omicron the Nomad Soul on the Dreamcast, or the Nomad Soul just in Europe. It's one of my favorites, I really think it's a cool game. Um, if you don't mind the blocky graphics, it's got a great soundtrack. Like I said, the voices are a little low, a little hard to hear, so I adjusted them, I made them a little higher. Um, for its time, it's got some interesting ideas, really cool stuff, and uh, it's like a Shenmue Lite, it sort of reminds me. You can't interact with as many things, but it's a good, solid adventure game great on the PC and the Dreamcast, so definitely check it out if you haven't played it. And thanks guys for watching, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com, and I will be thinking of you all tonight when I eat my sushi. Be good.